Welcome class sa second lesson natin sa Earth Science. Today, we will talk about the Earth Systems. So, system is defined as an organized group of related objects or components that interact to create a whole. An example of a system that we can all relate to is our body systems. So, our body systems are made up of interrelated parts and in one way or another, they have similarities. They have similar functions. Uh, the processes that happen in each part are similar or connected to the other processes. And they are also made up of cells that are similar in one way or another. Systems could either be classified as an open system or closed system. Um, so if matter and energy exchange is present in a system, then it is called as an open system. This is an illustration of an open system. Here, it is evident that energy exchange is happening. Energy is flowing in in the form of sunlight and out in the form of heat. Additionally, exchange of matter happens as water vapor exits the tank and the particles from outside the environment enters it. So let's go with the definition of a closed system. Take note that in a closed system, there is a presence of energy exchange with the environment. It illustrates a closed system. So this terrarium is teeming with life and only watered once 40 years ago pa. Life still survive inside it because energy is still flowing inside and out of it. Again, in the form of sunlight and heat. But of course, in real life, um, sunlight and heat will not be only will not only be the energy that will flow in and out of any system. Let's go with the different systems of our planet. So our planet. Our planet has four systems, namely it is atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere, and biosphere. Atmosphere is a mixture of gases that surrounds a planet, moon, or other celestial body. In terms of our planet, atmosphere, the atmosphere itself, uh, refers to all the gases that we can found here in our planet. Now, our atmosphere is made up of different gases. Namely, it is composed by nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, neon, helium, krypton, methane, and hydrogen. But most of it, or most of our atmosphere, 78% of it is nitrogen, 21% is oxygen. So that's almost 99%. And only 1% is given to the different gases that can be found here in our planet. So there are five layers of the atmosphere. It is the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. And these layers are distinct from other layers because of the way temperature behave on them. So mostly separated sila sa bawat isa because of the differences on their temperature. So let's begin with the first layer, the troposphere. So the troposphere is 12 to 20 kilometers above the surface and 75 to 85% of the atmosphere's mass is here. It means yung kanina na binanggit kong mga materials, hydrogen, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, and the other gases, 75 to 85% of those gases is in here in our troposphere. Next, the way um, temperature behave in troposphere is that as you go higher, temperature decreases. So increase in altitude will mean that you are decreasing in temperature as long as you are in the troposphere. And most water vapor is here. Of the troposphere, you will find the stratosphere. It reaches up to 50 kilometers above the surface and it is also here where you will find the ozone layer. Most of the absorption of the UV rays from the sun happens here. And this explains why the temperature tends to increase in this layer as the altitude increases. 
the mesosphere is next. This layer starts at 50 kilometers above the surface up to 85 kilometers. So this is where meteors start to vaporize as it enters our planet. And unlike the stratosphere, the temperature in this layer decreases as the altitude increases. Next is the thermosphere. It starts 85 kilometers above the surface up to 1,000 kilometers. So temperature increases in this layer as you go higher for the reason that it absorbs X-ray and UV radiations from the sun. The air density is also low in this layer. This is the reason why this layer is set to be the start of the outer space. Outer space is said to start 100 kilometers above the surface of the planet. And lastly, remember that the auroras occur in this area. Is the exosphere. It is said to start 1,000 kilometers from the ground. And scientists are divided if this is still part of the atmosphere because of the very limited amount of gases present here. Additionally, the temperature in the exosphere decreases as you go higher. And the International Space Station orbits in the exosphere. After the atmosphere, let us go with the hydrosphere. The hydrosphere refers to all the water found in our planet, which can be liquid, ice, or vapor. Some scientists tried to separate all the solid water or the ice from the, hydro from the hydrosphere by describing it as the cryosphere. So let us focus with how the water is distributed in our planet. More than 75% of the surface of our planet is covered by water. 97% is salt water, which is found in the ocean, and only 3% is fresh water. Out of this 3%, 79% is frozen in ice caps and glaciers. 29% is underground, referred to as groundwater and only 1% is readily available for consumptions, which is referred to as surface fresh water. Most of the surface fresh water is seen in lakes, which is 52% and 38% is in our soil. Although we only have limited amount of fresh water, the water cycle provides our steady supply. The evaporation happening in our oceans exceeds the amount of rainfall it receives, which means that most precipitation happens in our land and just return to our oceans as a runoff. Next system of our planet is the lithosphere. It contains all of the cold, hard, solid land of the planet's crust. The semi-solid land underneath the crust and the liquid land near the center of the planet. There are two classifications of the lithosphere. It is based in composition and physical characteristics. So the compositional layers are classified based on the materials they are made of and the mechanical layers are classified in the way they behave. The compositional layer starts with the crust. It is the outermost layer of the planet and mostly composed of silicates. These are the minerals uh, which are made up of silicon and oxygen. Next is mantle and described as the layer between the crust and the core. It is composed of silicates plus aluminum. Although materials flow in mantle, it is not liquid. Materials here are described as semi-solid. Then the core is next. It is divided into two, the outer core and the inner core. The outer core is made up of liquid metal and the inner core is made up of solid metal. So again, the compositional layers is the crust, mantle, and the core. 
Now let's go with the mechanical layers of the earth. First layer is the lithosphere. It includes the crust and the upper portion of the mantle and is rigid, which simply means that it is not flexible and tends to break if force is applied. The layer at the bottom of the lithosphere is the asthenosphere. This includes the region of the mantle that flows relatively easy and scientists describe it to behave like a melted plastic. Under the asthenosphere, you will have the mesosphere. So unlike the asthenosphere, it is described to be rigid because material flow is slower in this layer. Next layer is the outer core and the only layer that is true liquid. The flow of material in here is faster as compared to the flow of materials in the asthenosphere and it is the reason why we have a magnetic field. Last is the inner core. Movement of materials in this layer is limited because it is composed of solid metals. The last sphere is the biosphere. It includes all the living organisms in the planet. Sa madring sabi, all the life on earth, microscopic or larger organisms. So it is believed that life originated from single celled organisms and these organisms are capable of performing unique chemical pro processes. Simply, they want to gain nutrition or they want to reproduce for them to survive. Yun yung goal ng different processes na to. Humans is under the biosphere. However, we are having a big impact to the different spheres of our planet. It is because of all the structures and activities that we are doing. Kaya pinopropose ng mga scientists for us to be part or to, for us to be separated as another sphere which they call as anthroposphere. Since all of the systems of our planet is classified as open system, many interactions are happening within the four spheres. In one way or another, an event that will happen in the biosphere may affect the three other spheres. And the same thing will happen if an event occur in another sphere. This diagram shows interaction between the biosphere and the atmosphere. The success of this photosynthesis and respiration is somehow related then sa properties and functions na ibibigay ng hydrosphere and lithosphere. So that's the end of our lesson. See you again sa next lesson natin.